Bitcoin has started its run to a new all-time high. What exactly does that mean? We're going to be taking a look at that, the key levels that we have closed above on the weekly time frame and why that is so significant. We're going to be taking a look at that. We're going to be taking a look at a few altcoins as well. They're very interesting right now and the next possible legs up that might be about to start happening. So let's go take a look at the charts. Here, we're going to take a quick look at BTC first. Uh, just on the low time frames here, I uh, was chatting with Romps earlier today for quite some time on just the new course content and everything like that. And potentially, uh, we believe that there could be a sweep of this level through here because uh, there's probably a whole heap of liquidity. Uh, long orders resting with their stops resting below this level. So wouldn't be surprised if we take that out and then maybe come back and test this trend line from these two points here. The other interesting level as well that you know we can't ignore is the VWAP, which is this orange line, which is our anchored VWAP, anchored from the bottom of this pump down here. Already tagged that very nicely with the last entry candle set up. Possibly that level gets swept before we move up again, but um, we it might not get that deep. Bulls might hold it up high enough. Maybe we only come back down and touch the 0.618 of this range uh, and sweep the trend line through here. Take out the longs that were just sitting underneath the bottom of the inverse head and shoulders and then rally on from there. So, you know, apart from that, just the basic structure, you know, inside this range is a bit of an internal uh, activity going on inside this range. We had the inverse head and shoulders here, which broke the neckline and had a nice little run, came back, tested it, and then pushed again, but um, sort of had a roll over here and it's actually resulted in a head and shoulders. So we're going from inverse head and shoulders straight into a head and shoulders. And right now our price is sitting on the neckline. So I wouldn't be surprised if you know, something like this ends up happening, uh, comes down and hits the target for this head and shoulders, uh, breaks down from the neckline, runs towards that a little bit and then bulls take back over after taking out a whole heap of uh, late longers. So I wouldn't be surprised something like that does happen, but you know, the market is always going to do whatever it wants. You know, we can never predict what the market is going to do, but we can be waiting for the market to do specific things and then respond when it does. So if we do have a rollover and breakdown of this uh, head and shoulders neckline here and sweep the level through there, tag the 0.618, we're really looking to get into a long position after the reclaim of this trend line. And definitely the trigger for, you know, for me to get quite bullish again will be a reclaim of this neckline through here. One of my favorite trading setups is uh, a breakdown of a head and shoulders and then the failure of that pattern, right? And it ends up being something like this. Uh, where the, the target doesn't get hit for the head and shoulders. It's a big fake out. You get a lot of uh, shorts trapped below this level, reclaims the neckline and then pushes up from there. Uh, entry triggers are at a couple of points. After the reclaim of the neckline, so about here, uh, and then reclaiming the right shoulder and coming back and doing a bullish retest of that and then pushing up. Usually there's a whole heap of liquidations available above this area here. And because there's two highs through here, so I've got the red line through here as well. Because there's two highs in here and the SFP, there's probably going to be a whole heap of liquidations up here. Um, and when those get triggered, those liquidations and, and short position uh short position stop losses get triggered, then that's when it pushes us up out of this ascending triangle type structure. So let's see how it ends up playing out, but I wouldn't be surprised if we did end up with something like this. We have seen some uh, quite nice bullish action on a few different altcoins uh, already. Let's go and take a look at those. Solana and Link. Solana already had a bit of a move up. So we'll take a look at Link first. Um, oops, sorry, I got the wrong chart up. Take a look at Link first. Uh, we have had a nice breakout here on the one hour and four hour. Four hour, we're just sort of waiting for this to close, still an hour and 20 minutes until it closes. Um, but yeah, ultimately, the one hour, we want to see continuation. Not really loving this current price action because BTC is sort of rolling over a little bit as well. So it might uh, put a bit of a dampener on this Link breakout. Um, but ultimately, what we want to see is a strong four-hour close. I don't want to see it come back and then retest inside this triangle. I want to see this triangle hold as support. You know, maybe this ends up coming back down here and then 
pushing from there. I don't want to see 1150 get taken back by the Bears. I want to see this hold uh, hold strong. Bulls continue to make it grind up, and then eventually we'll probably hit a few pockets of liquidations again and you know maybe push up to $13 or you know potentially uh, could get quite bullish and hit $14.50. Or even 18 1, right? Which is a weekly level. And that could give us the next key range, right? So that'd be all the way up there. So it'd be pretty big to go from this range here and all, you know, pump all the way up to $18. But you know, if we look at Solana, it's sort of done that type of a move already, right? Broken out of the range and it's pushing up to a similar spot where, you know, that would be linked for $18, right? So it's not too far off at the moment. Solar is probably the most bullish and that's because they have the conference going on right now. Uh, it's trying to break out or already broke out of its uh, triangle pattern through here. And it tried to have another little push just before. Uh, that did it. If you were low time frames, you'll see this is a nice ascending triangle and then it broke out of that earlier. Uh, but now it's sort of struggling a little bit here. That's a nice bearish divergence through there. So yeah, similar setup here to what we happen is happening on Link at the moment, but more inclined to say that the Link setup is more similar to what we're seeing here on Solana. And you know, that's what I would like to see on Link. Uh, a little bit of a stronger push and, and rally to go higher for its next, next leg up. At the moment... Uh, you know, you got to be careful that this doesn't end up closing like this on Sol because it could be triggered for a little bit of a rollover. But ultimately, I think uh, Solana should come up and at least test $37. Uh, typically, when they had this conference happens, it usually puts a top medium term in Solana anyway. So just need to be careful of that. I'm not getting into any new positions here for longer term swings or anything like that. Definitely would need to see Sol uh, have a bit of a pullback and rollover for the next swing trade. Because, you know, if you've been following us in Discord, a lot of us got back into Solana on this inverse head and shoulders uh, back here in September, around $19 and some even lower. And then the next really obvious entry was the breakout of this downtrend through here, this down, downwards channel, uh, and also the inverse head and shoulders at the bottom of that around $20. So that was a pretty nice, gimme, uh, gimme easy layup trade. And yeah, my target the whole time has been this 37 level. So we'll see if we end up actually tagging it. Wouldn't be surprised if it finds a way anyway. But I would keep your eye uh, on this one hour here and see how that closes. If it closes red, you know, that opens up for a potential shooting star reversal and pullback, maybe to retest this 34. Uh, and then that, you know, ends up needing to be a bit more of another flag before the next push higher. So we'll just see how that ends up playing out. Um a few other coins. Aave is not looking too bad. I think it just needs to um, probably fill out a little bit more of a flag pattern maybe uh, before it takes off next. A lot of coins seem to be in that sort of space at the moment. Liquidity is one that has been acting interesting. I uh, had a nice little pump the other night, but sort of retraced most of that. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if this did continue to see legs. It's been quite bullish since realistically September, mid-September. Uh, quite a nice run already, almost 200%. Now, Filecoin was the other one. Uh, really nice breakout of its range here and then came back and retested that range. Now pushing up. So that's what you want to see. You want to see, you know, this big range sort of forming, a uh, big bull flag type setup above the previous range high. You know, that's the um, sign of strength that we want to see. Wouldn't mind seeing that come back one more time, maybe doing something like this. Sending triangles seem to be the flavor of the month at the moment, but they don't all end up like that. Uh, you know, as long as this is above $3.50, it looks good. Wouldn't mind seeing something like this either, you know, just a flat uh, flag pattern and then a breakout of the high. So let's see how that ends up playing out as well. But I think that's a pretty good one too. Uh, Cass is one that's been actually running all year. Uh, this thing is an absolute beast. It looks like it wants to go up again soon, but I'm not 100% sure when that's going to be. You know, Do we need to come back and retest this trend line one more time? As long as it's above this tr upwards trend line here, I'm confident this is probably going to build up. So it might come back one more time and then do something like this before its next pump. But this has been uh, a decent size for this coin anyway, a decent size of reaccumulation range, in my opinion. Uh, almost 40, if it goes to the end of the triangle, you know, it'll be almost 70 days. Much more uh, 
probably the, the largest other accumulation pattern would have been this one back here, the falling wedge, with quite a large pullback as well. So we'll see anyway. Uh, with this one, I think I'm staying bullish on it as long as it can stay above this trend line. Now, if it loses this trend line, guys, it could end up doing something like this and uh, then rolling over. So if we do break this trend line through here, uh, that is going to be the signal, the break of the trend line, movement into sideways price action, uh, and then a backside test of that trend line is what you want to be looking for for the exit on something like this. You've been holding it for a while, okay? That is the other one uh, that's had a really strong move. It's too late for me to get into this one now, to be honest. Um, but I do believe it has a little bit potential to have a bit of a pullback or flag for a little bit here before its next move up. So it might be a continuation play. Uh, this definitely could end up making its way up to 550. That's for sure. So just watching for that. Okay, so BTC and the high time frame. That's what we're all here for. I think the most important thing uh, to understand on Bitcoin is that we have reclaimed a massive, massive level on the weekly time frame. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to get a, a separate chart here. One second. Okay. So we're going to look on monthly levels as well. Right. So this is the, really key monthly so a reclaim of this i mean we're probably not going to close above that only 17 hours left until the end of the monthly here for october but i would like to see november break into this and not end up being a bearish or gray or red month here and reject from this monthly level but in terms of the weekly i think we have reclaimed a serious uh range low on the weekly right and that would be this level back here now, the other thing as well uh, to be aware of is the macro fib level also, right? So the macro fib is when we take our Fibonacci level from the previous all-time high to the low here. And we can see how accurate these levels are through here um, and was definitely a major support level bouncing. If we even go down to the daily time frame, you'll see how effective this is in the previous market cycle, right? We didn't, as soon as we got above the zero, well, sorry, the 1.618, we never got a daily close below that level. Uh, and it ran very, very strongly, right? So recl reclaimed it here, uh, rejected right off the next level, then came back, pumped through, right? So you can see how important these levels are on the Fibonacci, right? Or also all through here. Uh, what is it? I think this is a 2.272. Yeah, that's a 2.272, the green line, uh, getting tagged multiple times, right? So market structure really respects these Fibonacci levels on the way up of uh, once you head into price discovery, right? So we'll use those again uh, when we're in price discovery above the new all-time high above, you know, 69K again, probably sometime next year. Uh, but we have reclaimed that. So obviously rejection here, rejection here, and now reclaiming that level and reclaiming the weekly above this uh, 32K area is really important. So we uh, potentially have started our run towards the new all-time high. And that is because we have entered the range, right? So basically the range between uh, the lows from here and the highs from here on the weekly time frame, right, is what we're looking at. You can put the weekly in like this if you want to. Much of a muchness, but it's all realistically the same deal. And so, you know, this was a deviation below. This was a deviation above. It lasts a lot longer, to be honest. Sometimes we like to look at the wicks on these as well, just for a bit of a more higher time frame perspective as well of, you know, where the extremes were. And we can see the wick above, you know, the wick above. It just did not want to spend any time above above this this previous or you know that what was the previous all-time high in april 2021 just as soon as we got above that level you know it spent very very little time above then uh pulled back quite fast so uh th that's basically you know a deviation so deviation below deviation above uh and when you come into when you hit one side of the range you know we expect it to run to the other the next other side of the range right so we deviate above the range, come back into the range high. We're looking for range lows to be tagged, right? 
We broke out and below range lows here. And you can see on this weekly, strong rejection of getting back into the range, right? Wasn't going to be another deviation because this easily could have just ended up going like this and then reclaimed and then run all the way back. And we ended up having a massive reaccumulation range sideways. But um, yeah, this ended up obviously rolling over and, you know, potentially this whole move through here is just another large deviation of the range low, right? And now we've finally reclaimed that. Potentially it chops around here for a little bit and we reclaim this range uh, range low, but most likely the next point of, uh, of target now of reclaim this range low is to chop and grind our way up to the 2.618 and the 50% level of this range, which is also a key high in the, during the bear market, right? It's probably the only swing high that we got the entire bear market. It was a quite a brutal sell-off. Uh, to be honest, it was pretty much straight down for almost a year with one swing high. Uh, you know, you compare that to uh, the the weekly time frame of the previous bear market. You know, we had a whole heap of swings. This was like a hundred percent swing. This was a pretty strong swing high as well here, and then you know this one was pretty weak. But um, you know, that's like three or four um, decent swing moves compared to only one move up in the bear market. Uh, so yeah, it was a very, very brutal bear market. That's for sure. And that's why so many um, institutions, trading companies and everything like that, they all went under, you know, FTX, for example, three hours capital Celsius, uh, you know, for position for positions that they were stuck in, there was no real chance for them to, to get out of and escape. So that was uh, obviously a really tough period. And, and that's why when people say, you know, hasn't you know, we haven't seen enough blood yet. I'm like, well, can you take a look at the chart? Because we pretty much went straight down for a full year, uh, 70%, 77 to 80%. And, you know, most altcoins pulled back straight down very similar fashion, if not much more aggressively, you know, and they went 95 to 99% a whole heap of them. So definitely have opened up uh, for the new cycle to be a, a, be a little bit more bullish, that's for sure, and begin that hope rally, start to move into a bit more optimism. But I do feel like most likely what's going to happen now that we've reclaimed this range low, as long as we're above this 32K level, and um, I should point out that remember that this is our long-term VWAP on the, on the weekly time frame. Sorry, I should say on the, on the yearly time frame. right, is at that level as well. So the previous year value area high is at 31,200, right? And our key range low on the weekly close is pretty much 31,500. So they're very, very close in terms of levels. And that's why, you know, potentially if we do get a rollover back to that level, I think it's going to be a really strong buy. Now, we don't know how fast this is going to take for it to run to the mid range at 48K, um, but, you know, I should say 46, but just this candle here basically is what we're looking for. Uh, but, you know, it could pump and then go sideways for a little bit and just take a while to chop up. Like, look at how long it took for this to move up, right? It can take some time from to, to move up. It's not going to just go run straight there. Then most likely I think there'll be a throwback or some chop around, you know, whatever. You, we might have the halving around here. Who knows what's going to happen? It might come all the way back down to 30K or even 20K some type of black swan event that is unpredictable, but I do believe that most likely we'll have some sort of a push up into the middle of the range at some point over the next few months to about 46, 48 K then eventually break through that and head back up to, you know, this range high type area around that 60 to 68 K area. Um, and, you know, we'll see what happens around those levels. Who knows how things are going to change once these spot ETFs finally get approved most likely they're going to be approved before January 10th. So things could get uh, pretty interesting at the start of next year. And, um, and then, yeah, we've got the halving in April. So, you know, very, not that long afterwards, we're going to have a huge amount of demand rushing into, into the industry and talking about like institutional demand right now, CME actually is one of the largest, uh, 
open interest uh, platforms right now. So they've actually, they're just second behind, only just second behind Binance right now for the most open interest on one platform. And then uh, third is Bybit at the moment. So it's very interesting to see, you know, CME opened all the way back here and it's taken them, you know, almost four, four or five years to um, catch up. Well, yeah, definitely five years, right? To catch up to where the crypto institutions are and uh, start, start to take a bit more volume off them. So that is a really big sign that institutional uh, volume is coming into crypto. More institutions are paying attention and a lot of them don't have that much uh, spot exposure because, you know, they all, they all, all using, if they're using CME only, they only have futures exposure. But, you know, a lot of them do want to have spot exposure. So we could see massive amounts of uh, interest and demand coming into the industry through the spot ETF at the same time as the halving happening not too long after. And that is two uh, curveballs because obviously the halving is a supply crunch as well. So we're going to have a demand crunch and a supply crunch only a couple of months afterwards. And you know who knows what's going to happen to the price when that happens. But I definitely believe that Bitcoin has reclaimed the range low and now that has begun to start the path to rally up to the previous all-time highs. So... That is, that is pretty much it for this uh, update, guys. If you do want to learn more from us, you can uh, catch us on our new course. We're going to be Market Mastery 3, and we are going to be starting that uh, at December 5th. And uh, there is an update for you guys on that. Today is the last uh, the last day for the next 24 hours. You can get the $300 discount on the course. So it takes the course from costing $1,100 down to $800. And you can get access to that uh, by just going to cryptocurrency, uh, just going for market mastery, go to the cryptocurrency trading courses, which is on this button up here and uh, go to market mastery 3.0, right? When you go in here, you just click on apply to cart and then you can uh, add your discount code through here. So you just go, uh, Go like this, coupon code MM Early Bird. Right, just like that, MM Early Bird. And it will give you a discount. It will give you about a $300 discount and take the price down um, to $800. Anyway, it should be $800. So hopefully that makes sense uh, and you guys get the discount. If you do want to join us for the course for the next cycle is starting December 5th. And yeah, we've got heaps of new content to take you guys through all the long-term VWAP indicators. We're going to be doing a huge section on smart money concepts and stuff like that as well. So yeah, pretty excited to take everybody through the new content. And yeah, if you want to join us, use the code and uh, make sure you get that done tonight if you're thinking about doing it because it will expire uh, November 1st. Okay, thanks a lot for joining us, guys. We'll see you all in the next episode.